Hey guys, Will here. Today we're going to look at this bolt action pen by Big Eye Design and a top tip that you need to know about it. Stay tuned. Okay, let's unbox this. Okay, so what do we have here? This box, the pen, by the compartments, we have some extra spare parts. This is an extra accessory box. So, first of all, I already swapped the hardware on this to the titanium Damascus that I bought. But normally you would have this titanium plane clip on it like this. This is $39, that's extra. And actually, it comes with this bolt, titanium Damascus bolt as well. That's actually free of charge. If you want the regular titanium version, it's already installed, that's what's stock on there. It depends on how you want the look, but that, actually that's pretty cool, that's free. Um, extra accessory, you get, let's see, extra spring, extra O-rings. Um, the O-rings is on here, on the barrel, because it's what's keeping the, kind of stabilizing the barrel with the main body. Okay, so let's just move that out of the way. Actually the box is pretty cool because it's magnetic. So I think it's actually okay as a gift box. I guess you can wrap this on top of this. <laughs> Pens are really cool gifts, gift items. Let's check out the pen. Pretty cool. I actually also have the original refill taken out and put in my favorite refill, which is the Pilot Frixion, which is a little bit longer. So this is probably its full format if you want to look at the size of it. And the type of pen refills that it takes is quite a lot. I mean, that's a selling point. Why own an extra bolt pen and this is a selling point? Why would you buy this? It's basically that they have an adjustable barrel over here that you can fit multiple sizes without doing some kind of like trimming work. Let's look at the back of the box and then you get an idea. We have the Parker style, which is super, super popular. A lot of pens take that. And then rollerball style, especially you can find these on like disposable pens as well. Very popular if you, have, if you love like gel style ones. Okay, so it gives you, an, here, let's give you an idea. This is the refill that comes with it, Schmidt Megaline P950. Jeez, it sounds like a robot. This this is like a, I guess it's a, their own version of Schmidt's own version of this Fisher Space Pen. It's a pressurized ink. So that's kind of cool. Comes stock with a nice uh, pressurized, if you like the, that kind of Fisher Space Pen type of ink. Easy Flow 9000, that's uh, what comes with Tactile Turn. And uh, my favorite ink refill. And as you can see, it's much, much more longer. I actually have to trim this down most of the time to fit into other pens, but yeah, so it gives you an idea. This is the minimum space that you need. It has to be this minimum length, and this is the maximum length. So it, gets, it gives you an idea, and that would basically give you pretty much a lot of the refills in the market. Obviously not, not these tiny ones. Look at this tiny one for Zebra. And I think it's similar to D, D is it a D1 or whatever? And the this uh, Fisher Space Pen, they come with um, the adapter so that this goes on. And what that does is it basically becomes a Parker. But without this adapter, I tried it. This, the basic part of this Fisher Pen, the metal part, is actually too short. And I tested it out. This gives you an idea. This is the shortest amount. Put this wood stick and chopped it down. Find the shortest amount that can fit. Gives you an idea that it's just a little bit too short. And uh, yeah, you need just a little extra. Otherwise the pen is not gonna poke out of it. That gives you an idea, the minimum size, and that matches the Parker. And so it gives you an idea how they engineered it. They basically engineered it for basically kind of like two pen sizes and anything in between that, which just gives you really a lot. Really, really the selling point of this is that, you know, you can fit, fit so much without even have to do any modification with any refills. This just gives you a lot of a lot of choices. Okay, so let's go with the dimensions, I guess. 130 maximum length millimeters. Shortest length, 118. So when you have, as you can imagine, the barrel, and, and there's an end piece of this, um, of the body that's going within this barrel. So the barrel is just basically screwing on. And this, you, this is actually the, amount that you're actually adjusting to fit through um, different type of pens. So between, you can get as long as 130, as short as 118 millimeters. The body itself, if you talk about the width, 
um, 9.7, 9.7 millimeters. If you're talking about the grip part of it, you can see it's bigger. It has to be bigger if it's adjustable. That's 11.3. And that actually gives you an idea with the tactile turn. It's actually the same thickness of it. It's just the body of the tactile turn is as wide through the, throughout the whole body. And they do have a thinner version of this. And this one obviously has, so actually if you feel like, whatever you feel in your hand is actually kind of similar because the thickness is similar on the grip area. That gives you an idea. And the length gives you the idea about that. Yeah. Okay, the feeling of this, it feels good. This gives you a little bit of grip. Everything's smooth, ch chamfered, there's no hot spots. So the clip, not the clip, the spring is pretty, pretty robust actually. Feels quite strong. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be a problem with arthritis people, but feels good. No problem with that. Nice clicky sound. And let's talk about balance. How's the balance? Yeah, no problem. Obviously the balances will be shifting around slightly, slightly with them um, if you're gonna shorten this out. But as you can feel, yeah, no problem. Let's feel that, yeah. Completely, completely fidgetable. No head or headlight feel. Very nice. Okay, and so let's just go into, oh, no, let me just go into the, the tip. Then I want to give you the tip about this. Let's open this thing up. It's pretty stiff as I'm, as you see, look at my finger, putting quite a bit of pressure. There's two O-rings here. This is my favorite refill. There's a spring. So that gives you an idea. We have two O-rings here. Now, the top tip I want to say is that I'm pretty bad, like as a flashaholic, I tend to like just grease up all the O-rings I see. And I actually grease this up and thinking, oh, well, maybe that'll allow it to twist and so I can change the refills more often. And actually that was a quite bad idea. This O-ring is not only the function of it would be to stabilize this barrel as there's like a little bit of gap space. So it will stabilize it by filling in the gap. And also it has the, the function of friction and not actually the loop function. What ends up happening is that if you lube this up and not leave it stock dry, what you end up with is a barrel that keeps turning in your hand, which is damn annoying. It, it's like almost a killing point, I would say. So if this was greased up and you put your hand here and you're using actuating it, your your pinky would grab more because it's a little bit thicker here. And actually, as you pull down and push across this way, you actually will push across and unturn this. So it will have that sensation of constantly unscrewing this barrel piece, the grip piece. And it's super annoying and wow that was like that top tip i want to just like get out there at first thing first because once you grease it, it is super hard to get that grease like clean this part and get the grease out of the inside i think i use lighter food or something like that and swish it around or in piece of paper maybe a thin paper and just like jamming it in there because uh yeah the the grease really ruined it so friction and to stabilize it this is the function of the rings the longevity of the rings, who knows? They give you two extra, it comes with a thing. It still comes with a lifetime warranty, so to be determined. And that's the top tip. So let's just go into the pros and the cons. And so let's put this back together. Actually, I wanna make one point. They actually put this little nuance, this little detail, and that is this spring is actually, there's a narrow part and a wider part. So to pay attention to that, narrow part will go onto here, wider part will go onto here, and then basically, covers all the gaps so it's kind of like the spring is perfectly centered in the tube area and then onto the onto the your refill insert so that's cool i like that little that's a very small little detail so as you put this is as you're putting a your favorite insert i'll just actuate it to on position and then rotate to my favorite and that looks good yes, sir. and so i didn't forget it that's pretty much it so easy to put in your favorite insert without worrying about the fitment. So the pros, um, pros adjustability, super cool that you can just put in any or not any, most 
most of the refills out there, which is crazy. Um, that just gives you flexibility, flexibility into if you like to change your minds often or depends on the situation. Some situations require different type of pen, pen inks, pen refills. So for example, my favorite, I would say Pilot Friction and writes well, it's erasable. I can erase it with a flashlight. But if I were to, if I wanted a tool pen that I need to work 100% of the time, I would always go with the, the Fisher Space Pen, always. Even though it doesn't write too well, it writes sideways, upside down, it writes in um, wet paper, it writes under water if you want. So if I were going, say, camping or something like that, or maybe even traveling, I want a pen that just works all the time. I'm not really thinking about how well it works. So you can have this pen and you can just basically just kind of tune it to whatever situation you have. So if you're just gonna write like long diaries or long notes, you pick your favorite pens. If you need a pen that has to work under any condition, Fisher Space Pen's the best. So then you can have one pen housing that can rule it all. So that's pretty cool. Adjustability, definitely a pro, is a big pro. Lefty, you can actually, T8 Torx, you can pop this top off and swap it. So it's very hard to see. It actually did a pretty good job. There's actually a line here, goes here, kind of like a tooth. So there's the, the real recess where the clip will go. You can flip the clip over. Now, if you're a lefty, that's like amazing. That's for a lefty, a 100% selling, selling point, that alone because I can't even imagine for myself as a righty, so you would you would obviously click like that, but for a lefty, it would be weird because they would have, they would have to use righty pens and then I guess have to clip on their, their hand and on the meat part. Maybe that gets annoying after a while, then flip it over and then put the clip on this side. So for lefties, I can imagine it's quite annoying using a right-handed bolt pen because it's kind of like specific, has a specific side that it's uh, actually tuned or worked for or designed for. So awesome, right? Awesome that um, it's just one pen that you can flip. So also if you're giving it as a gift, it just makes it easier. You don't have to think about if the guy's a righty or left hand. So cool. Also another pro. So that's two pros, adjustability lefty. Two really awesome, very, very important uh, pros. Third pro, their accessories are cheap. I got the titanium Damascus or some people call it Timascus, but they can't call it. That's like a trademark. This is $39. It's quite expensive if you think about it but you can look at some other brands and actually it costs maybe like $100 for a time ask. It's quite an expensive accessory to add on. So $39 is quite affordable. I would argue though that Obviously, this kind of flat bended Timascus is probably a, a little bit cheaper to manufacture, so they can charge cheaper. But if you're looking for that Timascus look, I mean, it doesn't get cheaper than this, I think, honestly, because $100 for this, it comes with this for free, plus this. So that's $139 option, includes free shipping for, for a nice titanium plus Timascus look that matches your favorite whatever kind of knife that you wanted to match. So now let's look at the cons. Uh, let's see. So the con, I would say it's the clip. It's kind of a nitpick and I'm a reviewer, so I need to pick something out. Some people might not, I, you can flex, you can kind of push it over here. It's not like super easy, but it's not like rock, rock solid. If you're had a if you wanted a pen, I guess that, or you're annoyed by something like a small little flex like this, that can be maybe a deal killer for you. Maybe not. You might look at this and just say, actually, that's a non-issue. Okay, another thing is, let me open this up again. Nice and robust and not lubed is the plastic. So there's plastic inside. As you can see, is it plastic or Delrin? Not really sure, but they're using it inside the thing. What is the longevity of this? Who knows? I really don't know how long it's gonna last. But I do say that it has a function, so I'm gonna kind of rebuttal on this. And I would say that as you're screwing this in, this plastic with the titanium is actually quite smooth. It's, it's very smooth to go together as a mate. And I would say that when you have titanium, screwing in with titanium, it has a really gall feeling. It's really gritty. It's why I really, really, really hate. There's my um, one of my MSR titanium flash. I really hate putting the cap on it because it's so. It feels like there's sand in it. It's such a cheap feeling. I hate it. I really hate actually titanium flashlights. Yeah, this that gets rid of it. There's it's completely smooth and there's no wiggle feeling. It feels solid, so it works. I mean, mating feature works. I guess O-ring helps 
some. It's in there. It's in there. I tried to. I was actually trying to remove it when I made the mistake of getting the grease in there. I was saying, is this removable? But it isn't. It's actually very, very strong in there and has a second function for the rebuttal. And it's going to be hard to see. It's actually, it's plastic. It goes all the way through into the top as a collet, as an adjustable collet. You can see like the lines in it. So as the pen tip is going through, if it's, I guess, too much thicker, it can actually kind of adjust adjust to the pen tip size so you can have that kind of very smooth you know you can have the more centered and more solid feeling for the pen as it's inside the inside the head so smooth to screw around smooth for the insert to go as it's entering and going through and has adjustable top because of the, the way the coled is designed so the plastic thing it seems to have a function it seems to have a function so that's the rebuttal if if you hate it maybe you'll not want to buy that maybe you don't like plastic but there is a, a lifetime warranty according to the the box <laughs> i guess as long as the company's in business you have something to look back into or someone to, someone to uh, fix the, the pen if that becomes an issue maybe third con you can uh, maybe say that it's nah i won't not going to say that if I were, I'm, I know that someone's probably thinking about this, so I'm going to tell them. Does can you feel the flux or anything? Well, let's see. There's. I guess if I grabbed it, if I like, I'm gripping it like a python, <laughs> and just kind of thing, I can feel the small flex. Under use, as you're using it, as you're actuating the bolt, I don't feel a flex in it, so it feels okay. It feels solid enough. It obviously won't be as solid as a solid pen, but is that a, a problem with you? I guess that's a con. So clip the plastic and it, because of its intended design, it's possible there's a little bit more flex in it. But I mean, there's not there's not a situation really where you should feel it. Now let's go into the conclusion. Who is this for? This pen is for the minimalist, I think. Ultra minimalist because it might be the one pen that someone might buy that it's the one pen that rules them all, where they will buy one pen and they don't like to trim inserts and they just want to have a pen that can take, as they maybe change their idea or their opinion or taste on different refills, they might want to try something new like the latest and greatest refill. Then they don't have to worry to, to think about does it fit or not because chances are it does fit. How about the traveler? This might be for the traveler, a person who travels a lot and then obviously again you don't like to trim refills you could buy i think you can go into like a convenience store and just buy any kind of disposable pen and take it apart and just take that refill from inside it's probably something that looks like like this frixion thing like just take one of those refills from the inside and and uh just put it in in the pen and you don't have to think about it so that's kind of like a traveler they just don't have things to fidget around with they may like a pen like this also so traveler minimalist how about pen geek or any kind of collector? Pens are, it's probably one of the cheapest, I would, I would say one of the cheapest hobbies out there. For $100, <laughs> I think, you know, you can always pull a trigger on $100 to get a pen that, you know, these pens are gonna, I mean, they're guaranteed basically for life. So $100 will last however decades left you have in your life. So that's pretty cool. And you can collect a pen and just enjoy the different nuances and differences of different pens. For 100 bucks, why not? So I think it's cheap. So if you're a pen geek or collector, you know, go for it, why not? Okay, so that is it. I hope that helps maybe in your buying decision if you want a pen like this. Very cool pen. I'm definitely gonna do, let's see, I need to do a, a review about the world's smallest pen. <laughs> if you can believe that. I do have, it's not this, actually for comparison, and it's not this, but these are quite small. This actually extends out like that. And it's not this. This is actually very, very small if you think about it. This can go in as a refill. I actually have a pen that's smaller than this. It's a Japanese one that I found. And it's a clicking pen as well. So it's a legitimate pen. And then I think it's the world's smallest. So I definitely will have a review out there if you want. So make sure you subscribe so you can see it if you like pen stuff or if you don't like. Or if you appreciate this review, you can like, share, and subscribe. That costs no money and helps with the channel. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yeah.